to ICO Formula. Um, today we're going to uh, have a quick run through on how to set up a wallet on myetherwallet.com. So basically a wallet is where you're going to store digital currency um, because you don't want to store it on an exchange. Um, you need to store it in a wallet and have it accessible offline and so on. So first things, go to the website www.myetherwallet.com now always check the URL um, resist the temptation to click through from uh, forum links, chat room links and things like that there can be a bit of spoofing going on and things like that you don't want your uh, key stolen and so on and so forth so always make sure you go directly to the site itself and when you get there make sure that you have uh, the MyEtherWallet LLC with a green lock in the top of your browser bar when you get there then you know you're on the right site Okay, so once you get there, you're going to uh, find a screen like this where it asks you to create a new wallet. Now, first of all, you just need there, there are a couple of layers of security to this, so it's quite important that you understand what's going on here. So, first of all, you need to create a password. You cannot forget this password, so make it memorable. Enter your passport, uh, password and create new wallet. When you do that, it will prompt you to save a key store file. Now, a key store file is there to um, lock and unlock your wallet basically so again don't lose it same as the password don't lose that either don't share the key store file don't be pushing that around anywhere and also make sure you take a backup of it save it to USB um, save it to another drive save it somewhere else other than your computer once you've done that once you've downloaded that file click I understand and continue and it'll take you to a screen like this this is where it's asking you to save your private key. Now, in this case, we've obfuscated it here because, as it suggests, it's a private key. It's not for sharing, it's not for broadcasting around the internet and so on. But you will end up with a very long uh, string of text, um, which is your private key. Now, again, don't lose it, don't share it, and also back the private key up also to a USB drive or offline. Now, th there is something else you should do here as well. It gives you the option to print a paper wallet. So, we'll show you what that looks like here. Um, again, we've obfuscated some bits on the right there with the private key, but as you can see, it's a pictographic representation of a wallet itself. You've got your uh, public address, um, which is just under the your address part, and then your private key, again, obfuscated is underneath. You've also got a QR code for your address and your private key as well. And you've got this funny icon in the round uh, image there. So those should match whenever you're uh, looking to make transactions. Anyway, once you've printed your paper wallet, um, you save that as a PDF or what have you, you need to save your address. When you do that, that will take you to uh, the unlock your wallet to see your address page. Now, obviously we've just downloaded a, a key store file or JSON file, so we're going to select that there as shown, um, and that will ask you to select a wallet file click that, same as uploading an image for example, it'll uh, ask you to browse to that key store file that you've just downloaded and enter that. Once you've done that it will ask you for the password. Now that's the first password that you created right at the start enter that and if everything's correct it will present you a blue button um, asking you to unlock. Hit that and it will take you to a, an extended screen of what we've just had that uh, shows you again your public address so that's the address that you give to people to send currency to you um, it gives you the option to download your key, st key store file again obviously you've already got that you don't need to download it again um, and then you've got your private key underneath which obviously is obfuscated there but again that's unencrypted don't share that anywhere and again it gives you the option to print your paper wallet and gives you the uh, QR codes as well at the bottom there now your address again up at the top there the uh, icon the round icon up there again it's all all needs to match and everything and you can see your account balance and your transaction history now transaction histories and balances you can uh, check on etherscan.io for ether for tokens you can use something called ethplora.io so um, so you have the details of all your wallet now okay and if you want to see your account balance and transaction histories. If you want to see um, what level of Ether you have, you can go to etherscan.io on the right hand side here um, to see transaction history. And 
etherscan.io that link will take you out to this address at the top here in red etherscan.io address and then forward slash that's the address your public address of your wallet and this will show you the balance of what you have in there um, bookmark that page and at any time you can come back to that and you can see if a transaction has been successful or, or what the deal is with your account um, the other link there for uh, Explorer for tokens that again if you click that link it will take you to explorer.io forward slash address forward slash again your public key on the end there so you can put your public key uh, your, your public address up in the top right hand box there and it will search and show you what transactions you've, uh, you have on the blockchain and your current balance of uh, tokens within very simple um, it's a little bit tedious but all of these things have to be done to make sure that you're secure so just make sure that you have a USB key make sure you save everything off of your computer and pro it's not a bad idea to take a couple of copies get a couple of keys and keep them in separate locations you know houses catch fire you get floods things like that you want to make sure that you've got another copy of these things in another place um, should anything untowards happen and uh, then you'll still be able to get back to your cryptocurrencies within your wallets um, do remember that things like my Ether wallet um, is a an interface it's not a bank it's not a place you store things it's where you create wallets and uh, for offline holding of assets